unmute. Okay, share the screen. You can't argue with the price of this thing. It's a little bit clumsy to use, but supposedly we're back on the road here. All right. So let me show you some of these things live here. I don't know if City College still has Telnet. Let's find out. If I Telnet, ah, we no longer allow you to Telnet. I'm glad of that. We were using it for years around here, and I, I was one of the people complaining, guys, you shouldn't even have that on your network. And I think they finally wised up. So let's um, watch Netstat minus AN pipe more. I don't know if the pipe more is going to help or not. Let's see what happens. Good. Okay. This shows me all the network connections on my machine. So let me just talk about what we have here before I do anything else. This is my local address, 147, 144, 196, 89, apparently. All city college addresses start with 147, 144. Um, on most of our networks, we are continuing to use public addresses on the end station, which is a very strange procedure, but that's what we're doing. Um, this last number is the port number. This really ought to be a colon here and not a dot, but whoever wrote the um, Mac OS chose not to obey the rules, which is another fun fact. The RFC is just rules of the internet, and very few people obey them. Microsoft used to be the worst offender, like Internet Explorer. just broke all the rules, and it would make you cry. You'd write HTML the way it should be written, and then you'd have to rewrite it the way Microsoft wanted it written, because they were the elephant in the room. They just did whatever they want, whether it was official or not. They've, they've wised up, though. Most people obey the rules a lot more than they used to. Anyway, there's my local address. There's the foreign address. So I have an established connection from this server to that server. This is my machine listening on a high-numbered port, 53,079, connecting to an HTTPS connection on 443. This is probably that Zoom session or something like that. Um, all right. So that's what's going on here. If you've done the SYN SYNAC ACK, which is the TCP handshake, and you're sending data, and you have not yet terminated the session, then you'll appear as an established connection. If you have no data transmitted for a period of time, I think it's two minutes or so, then you move to this close wait status where it says this connection appears to be unused and it will terminate it after waiting a while if there's no more action. That's why some uh, chat clients and stuff have a keep alive signal. They just send a packet every 30 seconds or so just to keep the session from terminating. So let's open up a session here. If I do SSH to a server, like one of mine, for example, Okay, now it's asking me for my password. Now I see it right here. That's port 22. 22 is SSH. So there's my remote server and port. Now it's given this local port number, 53093 is from my end of the SSH. So I'm talking from 53093 to my server on 22. And if I put in my name and password here, it will send it encrypted and it'll send it to that server on that port. That's what I wanted to show you. If I cancel it here with control C, then this will end. Looks like it ended right away. Um, if I just waited and never talked, it would eventually time out. All right. And I think that's all I needed to show you about that. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to do is catch that in Wireshark. So let's do that. Let me see if I can figure out how to get this junk out of the way. Um, here's Wireshark. Wireshark is your best tool to learn about networking. It makes it possible to very easily see what the packets are doing. So here's the network. I'm getting all kinds of traffic flying around. Um, I'm going to restrict it to TCP port equals equals 22. So now I'll only see traffic to port 22, which will help clean up all the rest of the networking. So now I'm going to move this to the side, and I'm going to do the same thing, SSH to my server. And when I do, you see packets appear here. And I'm going to stop it. So let's take a look. I sent a packet from my local address to that destination. My source port was 53,115. This is 22. I sent a SYN. The server replies with SYN ACK. Then I send an ACK. That completes the TCP handshake. So now we have agreed on a sequence and acknowledgement number, and I verified that the server is listening. So now we are ready to talk to each other as if I had a cable reserved for my own use, so that this process in this window can talk to the SSH process on that server without getting mixed with any other traffic. Now we have to talk. Because this is an encrypted protocol, after doing the TCP handshake, we have to do another handshake, 
where it sends me client, I'm talking protocol SSH, it acknowledges it, then the server says it's talking SSH. And in these packets, the client will tell the server information about what kind of encryption it can use, and the server will reply, and then we will agree that we're gonna use a certain protocol, and then we can talk to each other. And if you make an HTTPS connection, that's also worth looking at. Let's make this 443. And let me uh, start sniffing again. And let me open a secure connection to say Google. Okay, now I've got a connection to Google. So I'm gonna stop it. And I'm gonna find the whole process by getting frame contains Google. Okay. And this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, here's the real process of networking. And if you really want to learn this, you want to take the Cisco classes here. So it starts here. I sent a query saying, I, somebody typed in a browser, www.google.com. What does that mean? I have to ask DNS, what does that mean? And here, DNS answers me. And it tells me that that is 216.58.194.196. You can't send any data to an alphabetic address on the internet. You have to get a number, an IP address. So you use DNS to get the IP address. Now that I've done that, I can then send um, data to that address. Let me clear my filter here and see all the packets starting at that point. Okay, so now I send SYN to 443, and here comes the SYN ACK, and here's the ACK. There's a few other packets in the middle that got in the way. So this completes the TCP handshake on port 443. First I had to find the address from DNS, then I had to make the handshake to connect to port 443. Now I have to make an SSH exchange, and that works like this. The client says hello to open secure sockets layer, and what it tells it here is I tell the server, let me get this thing to expand without freaking out on me there. I tell the server what languages I can speak. And here, for example, are the elliptic curves I have. Um, I tell it, here's my cipher suites. That's probably one of the more readable spots. I am using Chrome of the latest version on a Mac. And so I tell it what encryption routines I can use. And these are what my client has available. The server has its own list of what encryption it's allowed to provide. And we will now negotiate which encryption to use. So I tell it I have all these advanced modern ones like AES-256 and AES-128 with TLS and RSA and so on. These are all good encryption routines. So after I tell that with my client hello, um, the server will send me a server hello, which is going to be down here someplace. Um, yeah, here's the server hello, where it picks one of them and says, okay, you speak all those encryption routines, and I speak these many, so out of your choice, I chose this one. The server in its wisdom said, we'll talk that one. So now that we agree on which one of the things we're going to use, it sends me a certificate. And the certificate is a digital certificate that proves that I'm really talking to Google, so I can then verify that with a third party and make sure it's really Google, and then we can agree on a key. There's a key included in the certificate. So then we can eventually get this all ready, change cipher spec, hello request, and after about seven packets back and forth, we're ready to send encrypted data both ways. If you're using unencrypted protocol, it's much simpler. Just a SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, and you're ready to go. The encrypted protocols require a lot more work later. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you for orientation. Mm. You have a clue about this stuff. And now I want you to go to Kahoot. Um, if you So, the way this works is you need a computer. Now, how many people are here without a computer or a smartphone? Nobody? Uh, one. All right. I got some here I can loan you. Uh, you give me an ID card, I can loan you a computer. It should work. I know at least there's some charge in it. I come down and give you an ID card, though, so I know if those walk off, somebody will yell at me. So, we're going to use Kahoot. This is, um, I used to use something called iClickers, and this is much better. So, Kahoot. Go to Kahoot.it. And I'm going to open the, the quiz here. Um, let me get it ready. Okay, these are worth extra credit. And uh, all right, I think this one might be all right to just ask a couple of silly questions just to see if you've got it. Um, eh, I think I'll go for the real one. Uh, let me bring it up here. All right, great, great. You're going to see. Um, yeah, 
that I used to, uh, in fact, I might as well turn on this stuff to have the sound if I can. Uh, you don't need an email. I'll show you. Um, you don't need email for this. All you need is to open a web page. Uh, let me start this one. And what is this? Loaded nonsense. Okay. Then classic. Okay. Um, there. Okay. So go to kahoot.it and type in that PIN number to join. And you give it some kind of name, any name you like. And if you get the most of these right, you get some extra credit. And back. I'm going to need paper to write that down. And I should pass around the paper to see who's here. Let's see if one of the pens are here. So good, some people have joined. And the people on the live stream have joined too. figure out how to operate paper here. So I know who's here. All right, so we got 27. That's pretty good. Okay, so what's going on here is you should have to answer the question and get it correct, of course, and you're also graded on how fast you get. So um, see how you like it. This usually tends to keep people awake. That's the only purpose of it. And there is extra credit if you win. So, here we go. Six questions. The first question. What TCP IP layer uses IP addresses? And you choose one of those four colored answers. Yep, so choose one of those. Those are the four answers. So which one of these is right? You oh. click whichever one of those. That's it. Uh, we're in. Well, that, that one finished. A lot of people got in a key. You may take some time for people to learn how to do this. It usually is a hit after a while. I don't know what happened there. Maybe you just lost your connection to the wireless network. How many people had trouble? I just, it took a second. Oh, it took a second. Yeah, all right. Uh, you can't even get in the game? Well, that's rude. Um, let me uh, – I tell you what. I'm going to stop this one and start it again because I have an option I want to turn on that I forgot to turn on. Um, that's right. That's what I'll always do is use symbols. What I want to do, though, is turn on some options here. Uh, maybe I had it. I want to display game pin throughout. Oh, it should have been there. Okay. I don't know. I didn't see it. All right. I'm going to start another one. They'll have a different pin, and the pin should stay on the screen. There. 532-947. And it should leave that number on the screen all the time so people can join late. You go to kahoot.it. It's the, it's, the uh, it's the same pin. Oh, then I guess the people that we're in are still in. Okay. Five oh three. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, Five oh three service unavailable. That's Kahoot. Well, maybe they're having trouble up there. Uh, that is, no, that goes like hoot.it.com. Just hoot.it. Yeah, that's probably it. There, hoot.it. There you go. Good, good. That'll do it. Yeah, good. Any others? Any other people stuck? Yeah. A laptop doesn't work? Oh, okay. Well, I guess I keep trying to charge them up. I guess I'll charge up some more and see if something good happens. You got a charger? Yeah, well, maybe the old laptops I got are broken. God only knows. Um, all right, well. Yeah, I'm not going to go back to you. Remote people can't use them. Anyway, yeah. let's give it a try. All right, so I'm going forward here, and we'll see. Okay, 
You've heard this one? So hopefully it'll be easy for you to get this one right. Oh, it, it does. It, oh, yeah. And if you get it wrong, you can't change it. All right. So, yes. All right. Well, that's the only point of this is to keep people awake. All right. So, it's... Uh, all right, so it's the internet layer, and a lot of people have got it wrong, but it is the internet layer that has IP addresses. All right, so, all right, so try this one. What layer uses MAC addresses? Oh, yeah. So that's right. Uh, wait, that's actually... It is network. That's right. Always gets me. It is the network layer of the TCP IP model. It would be the data link layer of the seven layer model, but this model is network. All right. So you send a SIN to a server that is listening. What do you get for a reply? Yeah, that's the sound of happy gamers. Yes, I did. It, that's all right. That's possible. So it's Synac. Yeah. All right. Um, good. All right. Aha, a new winner. All right. What service is on port 25? Ha. All right, that's SMTP, good. Email. All right, what protocol is on port 80? Matter of fact, I can try testing one of these myself and see if I can find any that work. This one looks like it works. Ha! Huh. After the break, take this one. It works. Anyway, all right. HTTP is correct. Good. All right. So um, I think that's it. Those are the winners. I'm going to make a note. Uh, is there another one? Uh, does it say that somewhere? You see it on the screen somewhere? I don't see six or five. This, where? You see it? On oh, there. Okay. All right. Good. Well, thank you. All right. What port use is Telnet use? They don't tell me what question I'm on. All right. Okay. So Telnet uses 23. All right. Not the most popular answer, but it's true. All right. So now I see the winners. Okay. So I'm going to record the winners. So uh, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll pick up at five, five minutes after. And I'm going to record the winners. And of course, you have to tell me your real name to get points. Um, Davey? Uh, no, I, as far as I know, I don't have any way to do that. And uh, Chan. Yes. All right, anyway, I'm going to keep track of it this way. All right, so we'll pick up in 10 minutes. And you that borrowed a laptop, take this one. It looks like it works. So some of them work anyway. And let me uh, try to record this information. Cahoots. Winners. All right. So yeah, yeah. Just take that one. It appears to work. All right. What's up with you? So you gave me, I sent you some information about Project 2, and you gave me a bunch of likes. Like, oh, here, let me turn off the uh, stream. Just a moment. Um, this is, and I Googled I'll turn it on again in 10 minutes.